1962, the University of Connecticut took various arts departments throughout the university and put them together as a school of fine arts. This year, we're celebrating the 50th anniversary of the School of Fine Arts on the campus of the University of Connecticut. The school has over 700 students enrolled in programs in art and art history, music, and the dramatic arts. Our goal is to take that innate ability of our students when they enter and to give them every opportunity to enhance it and to enrich it through association with our faculty, through ensembles, through art exhibits, through dramatic productions, through puppetry. They have the opportunity to develop to the highest level the quality of their artistic skills and to understand how the arts can impact in a very positive way their education here. Can, can art be taught? There's much that can be taught in terms of the practice. And that's why a program like ours is so important. Art making, you can be guided, you can be mentored, but you have to do it, and you have to do it, and you have to do it, so that, so that it becomes second nature. I am a painting major, as you can see, and I think it's really great that we take so many classes because you don't, you don't know when you come in what you want. I mean, I've always loved painting, and I am still a painting major, but I would have never known how much I love sculpture. I really like that we have to take all those, like all the classes, just so we know what we are good at, what we're not good at, what we can improve on, and find out what we like. This year, we developed a new center of digital arts on the campus of the University of Connecticut. This center involves not only the School of Fine Arts, but also the School of Engineering the School of Business, the School of Pharmacy, the School of Medicine, and the School of Law. This, of course, is a new area for us, and we are moving ahead. We are on the cutting edge of digital arts in this country today. We have a professional art gallery, very important in terms of the education of young artists and uh, young art historians to be able to see work and also be involved in installing the work, the handling of the artwork. It's not enough for students just to gain a look at pictures, flip pages, um, and try to figure out what art is. I mean, it's, art is a tangible thing. There's surfaces, there's scales, there's, there's the idea of real art. So it's really important that they have the opportunity to see not only real art, but some of the best art being made internationally, and that's what we do. The William Benton Museum of Art has continued to be founded on the principle that it is essentially part of an educational institution. The museum hall houses approximately a little over 6,000 items at the moment, dating from the end of the Middle Ages until today. We're always attempting to create something that is relevant to uh, the student's understanding of society, of culture of a particular time, a particular place. I mean, I could talk about what their curriculum should be and what's it's prepared them for internships and, and graduate school and being a professional artist, etc. But I want them to have fun some of the time, to still love and enjoy art making and studying art, and to have a passion for the arts that can drive them through the rest of their lives and provide that focus that a lot of people don't have a chance to have. The student coming here is more broad-minded and that invites cross-disciplinary things within the arts as well as outside the arts. I, th I think that the arts must work with each other. When we were in Ecuador, for example, over spring break, performing a reconstructed Corpus Christi Mass as it might have been heard in Quito Cathedral in 1700. It was very revealing for the students to be 
in Quito Cathedral to understand what that space was, what it is now, how architecture impacts our perception of music, our ability to perform music. So while we specialize in particular things, there isn't any one art form that completely excludes all others. The School of Fine Arts has a partnership with the Metropolitan Opera. We had nine trips to New York City in the past year where our students were able to go backstage, they were able to talk to the major singers to see piano dress rehearsals, dress rehearsals, as well as productions. And going on those, it's you get to see professionals do what you want to do when you, when you get out into the real world. You get to see a rehearsal in the morning and then you see a production at night. Um, and so getting to see that for free is one of the most incredible experiences you can have as a performer. It's a wonderful opportunity for our students, as is our affiliation with the Orpheus Chamber Orchestra in New York City. Our students go to New York and they go to the various rehearsals and performances of Orpheus and the Orpheus players come up to the campus in Connecticut and work with our students in this democratic framework of organizing music. For the last five years, Keith Lockhart the musical director of the Boston Pops, has been coming to campus not only to conduct the Boston Pops, but to also meet with our students, to talk to our students, to go to classes, to go to seminars with our students. They've gotten to know him. And through that relationship, they have been able to set goals and models for themselves that they otherwise would not have. So having someone like Keith on this campus is extraordinarily important to the growth and development of our students. The kind of creativity that we'd like to find in our leaders of tomorrow involves a lot more than being able to successfully regurgitate information. And the lessons that are uh, available in education and music and the arts, the lesson of self-discipline, of taking a talent and through application turning it into something. The lesson of gray area decision making, that uh, most of the decisions in life that are worth making can't be answered A, B, C, or D. The lessons of the group dynamics and cooperative spirit that's built with an ensemble performance. Uh, all of these things are things that have broad applicability in the kind of students we would like to see at the end of their education becoming the leaders of tomorrow. A School of Fine Arts for any art student, whether it's music, visual arts, or theater, is an exciting place to be because you're with colleagues who are examining the same essential issues as you, but in different mediums. And because theater is the nexus of all the art forms, we're in a situation here where that expertise is particularly influential. And we're a unique situation in that we have a regional theater on campus with a professional staff, professional faculty, and guest artists, as well as undergraduate and graduate students studying all aspects of the theater arts. The Connecticut Repertory Theater is the professional producing arm of the Department of Dramatic Arts and we think of it as the lab for our students. Our students study in our classrooms and our studios and then make practical application in front of an audience on the Connecticut Repertory stage. I'm not just in the classroom. I am out there working with my professors, my professional teachers working out there in the real world. It allows us to have a credit on our name. A career in the arts at this point in history is very exciting. Our students can be seen on Broadway, they can be seen on television, they're all over the world in the regional theaters and in film. One of the things though that's happening is that because of the internet, the platforms for our work are, are just taking off and multiplying by the thousands. So you'll see design students work on internet shows, on new websites, pushing the media, pushing the digital media. So our students are finding an incredible amount of work across industries that even 20 years ago didn't exist. The Puppet Arts Program here at the University of Connecticut has had great success. The program was founded in 1965 by Frank Ballard, who was my mentor and we offer three degrees in the art of puppetry, BFA, MA, and MFA. 
There are many different ways of becoming a puppeteer. The traditional way is to study on your own, to apprentice, to work. Um, we offer a path that shortens time, gives a focus, creates networks. And so by coming here to study as a student, they get to learn performance, design, building, and also how to, how to promote the idea. Because in puppetry you tend to be, um, you know, one person or, or two or three people in small groups working, um, you really learn how to go from start to finish, from concept to performance because you really have to do everything. People understand that students who have gone through this program have a sense of cre creativity, a sense of discipline, and a sense of teamwork that is very beneficial when working uh, on a major project. So I think that is the way that um, this program has become a benefit to the industry. Uh, they are out there developing ideas and um, pitching ideas and fulfilling ideas that uh, wouldn't have happened otherwise. I was the first graduate in 1971 of the Ballard Puppetry Program and uh, it was an extraordinary program that uh, allowed us to interact with professionals in New York and, and all around the globe at that time. I subsequently went on to uh, work in the art field and the performing arts field. I ended up working in an art museum and was the director of the San Diego Museum of Art for 20 years. And subsequent to that I came here to New York and was director of the International School at Sotheby's. Uh, but all of that harkened back to Frank Ballard and this program at UConn and the ability to see all the various art forms in situ and, and benefit from that. UConn is really unusual because we have two puppet programs, the Puppet Arts Program in the Dramatic Arts Department and the Ballard Institute. And together these two sister institutions constitute something that doesn't occur anywhere else in the United States. And the School of Fine Arts at UConn is, is far-sighted in that way because uh, the school understands how puppetry links the visual arts, the fine arts, music, uh, playwriting, acting on one stage, a puppet stage. What we have in the School of Fine Arts is a very vibrant and energetic community from the faculty through the students and includes the staff. The fact of the matter is we're very small in many ways, but we are very large in terms of the scope of what it is that we do and, and our ambition, which seems to me to be just enormous in comparison with some other institutions where I've worked. I walk through the art building and am caught you know, for the, an hour when I didn't expect to be there by a display that was done by the students. Walking through the music building and listening to all the rehearsal rooms, uh, it's, it's a place where creative ideas just generate. It's an atmosphere. I mean, a school of fine arts, you're part of the larger university, but also different in a very special way. You, you have to go to the glory of the arts. There is nothing that we do that is not affected by the arts. Uh, there is nothing that we can think that does not create new ideas that is affected by the arts. It has a transcending quality to helping us to understand ourselves and our world and to question and to look and to reflect. What, what are the arts in the 21st century? I'm looking forward to seeing more of it, and our students will be the ones telling us a lot about it. The arts by nature are ephemeral and fluid. We are, as Shakespeare says, the stuff that dreams are made of. So to be celebrating 50 years suggests that there's been an investment from this community and this university that this ephemeral study is worthwhile. That's a legacy to be proud of. Can you imagine a world without music, without the visual arts, without the opportunity to express yourself through the dramatic arts? Just imagine it, the NCAA Final Four basketball game without our pep band there. It adds something that isn't concrete to the environment in which we live. It's the human element. When we have paintings on the wall, when we go to theater, and when we go to musical performances, the human factor that really makes a university great, like the University of Connecticut. <laughs>